chimpanzee that! Monkey news, ya f- Hello again. Welcome to the final episode in this series of Christmas podcast. Uh, my final guest needs no introduction. I'm probably going to do one though, otherwise it'll sound weird. Joining me now, we have the inventor of comedy, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, I claim that one. That's yours. Yeah, I invented it. <laughs> Before me, there was, there was just nothing. There was... I can have that on your Wikipedia entry in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's why it's so good, Wikipedia. Uh, just, just like real libraries where you can go in and change the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> to, to, to your own ends. That's, that's what I like. I feel bad taking the mickey out of it because it's actually uh, a non-profit making charity, isn't it, Wikipedia? Yeah, but, I think um, so. I suppose everything evens out in the end. It reaches an equilibrium. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's mostly accurate. <laughs> it's when it's all personal. You, you go in someone's <laughs> biography and you see they've been stitched up <laughs> by someone they knew once. <laughs> yeah, you, you can tell that happens a lot because on certain profiles they just get locked eventually, and you, you're not allowed to edit them. Anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't even I don't even look at mine. So uh, I, I um no, it would be uh it would it would be horrendous. I imagine you must have to hate yourself as a public figure to Google yourself every now and then. I would imagine. Um, well, the the only reason I ever see things about me is um like through marketing. You know, like when you've got a film out. They send they send you everything, um, but I still think they probably only send you the good ones. Um, <laughs> and and Twitter, of course, you get you get a hue of um, of feelings there. That, uh, that that seems to be quite positive. Um, Twitter and Facebook, actually, again, it's uh, it's like a big toilet wall, but um, I think uh, in general it's slightly more positive yeah. than um, than going around every toilet wall. And wait until your name crops up. So uh, this, this is an intense version of that. This is that everyone who ever wrote about you on the toilet wall um, can uh, can actually post it to you directly, which is fun. <laughs> there definitely seems to be a hierarchy of. I think I think it ends with YouTube. I think that's a nightmare if you you check out some of the comments on on YouTube. Oh well, comment one is I love this. Comment two is well you're an idiot then. This is awful. Comment three is something racist. <laughs> and these, this, it just goes. It just goes. It just goes straight to the the comment. Comment three will in, include the word faggot or the n word. It's just that that that's it. That's it. <laughs> I just uh, imagine somebody who sets an alarm for it and just thinks I haven't I haven't been racist on YouTube for five minutes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, are you someone who, who looks forward to Christmas, or are you more of a, a Scrooge? Um, no, I, you know, I, I like um, I look forward to Christmas. Um, it, it's uh, traditionally, you know, time off and eating and drinking as much as you like. Well, obviously, well, as soon as I became unemployed and got some money, that was every day <laughs> for me. <laughs> time off and eating and drinking as much as I like. Um, and uh, you know, you, you, you see family if. Um, uh, probably like most people who, who don't live in the same uh, town as their their folk, you know, you, I only see them um, a couple of times a year, and one of those is is Christmas. So, no, it's it's it's, it's got fantastic um, connotations for me. Obviously, none of them religious, but um, it, it's it's all the, uh, the 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 best bits of life over a few days: friends, family, booze, drink, good telly, jokes, charades. Arguments, <laughs> you know, it's 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 um, it's like the essential oil of life. So it's, 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 yeah, it's it's reduced over twelve months, and then you get you get the the, the one day concentrate. So uh, no, I, I like I love Christmas. Yeah, it's great. So what was it like growing up in Reading on Christmas as, as a child? Oh, uh, amazing! Yeah, uh, the, the the same feelings, but uh, you know, times ten because. You, you you got the present you wanted, you know that that uh, is there, there's nothing like watching a kid open a present. It's what they wanted and they shake, <laughs> they shake and, and jump around the room. <laughs> it's like it's uh, no, it was it, yeah, it was like that. Um, I came from a, a very working class family. My my dad was a labourer. Uh, my mum was a housewife. We had no money, but I didn't know that. That was kept from me because. Um, there was a thing called the Burlington's catalogue, and so my mum could get me any 
any toy I wanted and pay it off 38p at 28 weeks. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a time of, it was a, a time of joy for, for so many reasons. You're allowed to stay out. There were sweets out in jars around the house. I mean, yeah. It was, it was like, yeah, a, 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 the, yeah the, the theme park of joy. <laughs> so uh, sweets out that you could eat all the time. Lemonade out, that, that never happened. Fruit, never saw fruit unless someone was dying. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> uh, Rape, the harbinger of doom. Exactly, you're allowed to watch telly all the time. It was just great, it was just fun. And, no, I've, I've, always liked, I've always liked Christmas, really. I can imagine you can't get away with Christmas shopping anymore. Do you have like a, a team of elves you send out? No, um, you just have to get posher and posher. You have to go to those shops that you have to, um, you know, ring a bell and they come and look at you oh, and prepare and, the helipad and, and let you in. And they they they, they wear uh, sort of white gloves to touch the things <laughs> they're selling you. So uh, yeah, that, that's what you have to do. You're the only person in the shop. And they give you a glass of champagne. <laughs> no, I hate I hated Christmas shopping. Before I was famous, I hated Christmas shopping because I couldn't afford good presents, and and it it, it sort of it is it was depressing, you know. So, um, uh, you you either overspent and and uh, then couldn't afford anything else for the year, or you you had to buy something tiny, you know, or a, a tat. And that's what that's what you know was 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 the bad thing about um, Christmas for me when I was when I was poor is that I couldn't afford nice presents for people, um, and now I can, but I'm famous. Yeah, it's uh, it's not such a fun experience. So that this is this is how money's good though. <laughs> Just, uh, one, one, one year, I got my family scratch cards. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, like I got little nieces and nephews. Some of them won, some of them didn't. They they they, they that, learned a life, life lesson. That's, life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's the luck of the draw, kids. <laughs> so some were crying, some were going and um, you know buying alcohol and cigarettes with their winning. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think online shopping is the way to go. I, I I've managed to get it all done on a smartphone this year. Which, you know, if any of my family and friends are listening, opening the presents, then I was probably uh, on the loo when I purchased that. Yeah, no, it's, it's online shopping, but I'm no good at that because I'm I'm very nervous about giving credit card details and things. I, I'm a bit of a luddite when it comes to things like that. But um, uh, no, I I and I also if if I'm being honest, I. I do like the experience. I would have loved the experience when I wasn't famous and not recognised of shopping. It's lovely if I had the money. Now I've got the money. Um, you know, you, you don't want to be recognised all the time. Um, so, but uh, no, I think I'd do what they used to do with um, Lady Di and just open Harrods for her after hours. That, that's what I want to do. Go around, go around shops, just me. <laughs> but I'll do that. That's good. I suppose that's what virtual shopping is, isn't it? You're the only one. You're the only one in the shop, but you know I like I like I do like um, um, particularly sort of that 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 nice posh shopping in you know New Bond Street or Madison Avenue. It's lovely because um, particularly at Christmas because the window displays are like at Disney World. They're just incredible, and that they they say you need this in your house. You know what I mean? If it, if they're, if they're, if they're selling you a pipe. It's in the best study you've ever seen. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. If they're, if they're selling you a bit of fishing line, it looks like the day out you'd want to have with your granddad and like you know, elks in the in the river with you. So um, I I do quite like that 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 sort of like fantasy shopping. Um, but uh, the other thing is I haven't got time really. You know, uh, when you're self-employed and in the business I'm doing, that it's you say it's a day off and you're doing what you want, but I have deadlines. I'll be in the edit Christmas Eve, probably. You know, I don't have to be. I could, I could take a day off if I wanted, but you think, well, I better do that because, uh, you know, I've, I've got to go to America the day after tomorrow and I've got to have this finished and I'm coming back before and I've got to have it delivered. So you, you do have to be very, very disciplined even though you're self-employed. When I had a real job, Christmas was two weeks off before Christmas. Yeah, that was that was great. You know, everything was Christmas. Two weeks Christmas, 
two weeks of Christmas parties, two weeks of drinking lunchtime, two weeks, do you know what I mean? It was fantastic. And now I sort of look at the calendar and go, oh, it's Christmas tomorrow. Um, but um, uh, more, of, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm regressing a little bit and we're making more of an effort now. So uh, I, I try and have uh, some nice time off and sort of, um, you know, do dinners with people we haven't seen for a while. I have a little, we're having a little soiree with, um, you know, friends and stuff. So uh, you, you've, it's important, you, you, you know, it's a nice excuse to celebrate. That's what Christmas is for me. It's a it's a nice justified excuse to do lovely things. That 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 I think that sort of sums it up. You um you mentioned friends there, so I I think I I need to personally thank you for putting Manchester on the map with Carl Pilkington. Again, I invented comedy, and <coughs> no one had ever heard of Manchester before I introduced the world to Carl Pilkington. I'm getting an awful lot of credit here. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> He's revered in these parts. We have like Carl Pilkington effigies, round-headed effigies on every corner. Well, um, the first year he was sort of famous. Apparently, his mum called him up and said they just did um, the top ten most famous people from Manchester, and you weren't in it. <laughs> and he went, right, okay, sorry about that. Um, he went, who was number one? <laughs> he went, Bert Kwok. <laughs> I think it's him, him, Cal Pilkington, and we've got Morrissey. Right? Yeah, that's... yeah, that's uh, that's it, isn't it? What's uh, what's the best Christmas present you've ever had? Oh, it's a tough one. Uh, well, obviously, with a, a long-term girlfriend, that's up the game a little bit. That we we make Christmas quite important for each other and birthdays. So it would it would almost certainly be something that Jane got me. Um, but uh, I do remember um an amazing christmas when i was i'd say 10 or 11 and i got to beauty oh yeah and after about three hours i realized that it that it was for the adults i i mean i didn't get a look in <laughs> i i i you know i i think i'd i i i had the um the team i wanted two teams i think it was i think i had West Ham and Manchester City and they put the big table out right they laid it down properly I had older brothers and sisters and I mean I could just about see over the table to have a go now and again um but, but I remember it being amazing I remember that being amazing that was like it was like two days of playing Sabutio in in the middle of the living room um uh, with Morecambe and Wise on the telly in the background, and sandwiches and sweets. So uh, uh, that 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 would be a tough one to beat, I'd say. There's always a huge tradition of the the same old movies on on British TV over Christmas. I was wondering if you had a particular favourite. Uh, the first one that that that, that always kicks it off is a Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, absolutely. Um, just amazing. <laughs> Michael um, Caine has screwed his ex. Oh, his <laughs> his greatest. His greatest role. Um, I mean, it's already the greatest story ever told, A Christmas Carol, and the only way you can improve it is stick Muppets <laughs> in it. Talking of Muppets, you're you're soon to be uh, sort of immortalised in in Muppet mythology. How does that feel? Uh, well, I remember being jealous of Michael Caine when I saw that he was the lead in the Muppet movie. So um, yeah. Uh, it, it feels amazing. I got offered it about this time last year, and I thought I couldn't do it because um, I was going to the States and I was launching Derek Series 1, and I said no, and I, they persuaded me, and we worked the days out, and I'm so glad that I, that I did it. It was amazing fun. It, the, the films turned out so good. I mean, I smile when I think of it because there's just so many fun... It's like a proper... It's a proper movie, right, one... It's not like a TV movie. It's a proper Hollywood movie. It looks incredible. Um, but it's also, it's also for adults too. It's a real comedy film. Uh, it, it's, it's got me, it's got Tina Fey um, and Ty Burrell and loads of fantastic cameos and The Muppets. It's a funny story. Um, so it's a real rip-roaring movie. I, I, yeah, I'm so proud. I'm so lucky. Um, 
but it was it was so much fun. I went in every day, and I couldn't wait till my favourite Muppets came. I had to remember there was a human being to say hello to, <laughs> and you know what I mean. I was like, oh, I must remember their name. What's their name? <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? It's just <laughs> terrible. Um, I know all their names now, and they're, they're friends, and they're fantastic. But it was funny as well because I'd often have a the the, the Muppet I spent the most time with. See what I mean? The you Muppet don't. I spent the most time with, and <laughs> like um, was Constantine, who's um, a, a Kermit look-alike, but is a um, an evil, oh, evil Russian man. frog, um, without giving too much away. And uh, I just chatted to him all the time. I, I know the person doing his voice was there as well, um, but uh, I chat to him. I come back, I go, did you have lunch? He goes, yes. <laughs> I go, what do you have? He goes, chicken. <laughs> and I go, isn't that weird for a frog to eat? He goes, what do you mean? What do you have? I said, I had chicken. He said, yeah, you had chicken, you had chicken. What's the big deal, right? And I looked over and some extras were just looking at the corner of their eye at me chatting <laughs> to this frog. And they know that there's no one's filming this, but he is just talking to a frog now. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I had a fantastic time. It was great. Can't wait. I love this idea that the Muppets stay in character during breaks. Uh, honestly, the guys that do the Muppet, they're, firstly, they're all lovely people. It's a weird family. They really are family, and they speak so fondly of each other and the time they've had. And Jim Henson, they sort of well up when they talk about Jim Henson. I've never heard a bad thing said about that guy. And the other, I got a feeling I did a Christopher Guest movie, and that was like a family as well. Do you know what I mean? When you you, you feel like you're outside of coming into this this lovely idyllic Waltons type family unit, and it was um it was similar. Yeah, it was it was it was so much fun and. Uh, yeah, it was it was quite a privilege really and I, I am aware of the legacy and I'm also aware that you know this is my this is my biggest lead role in a in a Hollywood movie I've been in um you know potentially bigger movies like Night at the Museum but not as a lead and I've been in lead roles that were smaller cult movies but um this is a huge Disney franchise you know so I, I don't want to be the person who no ruined the Muppets I know. <laughs> 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 he invented comedy, he put Manchester on the map, and he ruined the Muppet. Oh, and that's, that's going on the old Wikipedia. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, they're like it's official, like it's fact, yeah. I wanted to chat to you about comedy a little bit, actually, in terms of uh, its ability to demystify. I think I think I was probably 19 when I saw Animals, where you um, talk about the Bible. Right. And I'd seen comics, you know, make fun of religion, some of the more absurd aspects of it, uh, but I'd never seen anyone bring a holy book to the stage and then <laughs> take it apart. And I'm watching this and thinking, is, is this even allowed? Yeah, I, th- I think, unfortunately, some people do think that still. They yeah. think, is it allowed? They think that they're breaking the law by uh, uh, ridiculing uh, a ludicrous idea. I mean, that that's like a constant fight of mine on Twitter to get across that y- you are allowed to disagree with any ideology. You know, you're... Uh, I keep... You know, I, I do this tweet over and over again until it sinks in that you know it is it's everyone's right to believe anything they want and it's everyone else's right to find it fucking ridiculous <laughs> some ideas are just worth and, reinforcing yeah, and that uh, and I, I and they don't see the hypocrisy in them thinking that you, you shouldn't be able to ridicule religion well you can you can ridicule religion because it's ridiculous and that was the greatest trick of religion not 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 making people think that it was true but making people think that they weren't allowed to disagree with it or undermine it or laugh at it or or dismiss it or even find it amusing you know uh, of course you're allowed to find uh it amusing that people believe the earth is 6000 years old you're allowed to find that fucking hysterical <laughs> and you're allowed to laugh and point and you are allowed to laugh at that. I'm sorry. Uh, you're not allowed to cause harm. You're not allowed to say they shouldn't believe it. They shouldn't, you know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you're not allowed to, to, to impose your will on them. But you're allowed to put your point of view forward. And um, and you can't have a view on how old the earth is. It's like having a, a view on how tall someone is. There's an answer. <laughs> There's a correct, objective answer. Um so, uh, uh, and that's the other thing I keep tweeting. You're allowed to have your own opinions, but you can't have your own facts. So, yeah, there's a, 
a lot of people don't understand what an opinion is and, and, and what a fact is. They don't quite understand freedom of speech. Again, I, I tweet regularly, I tweet things like, freedom of speech does not include the freedom to be listened to or taken seriously or respected. You know, you're allowed to say what you want and I'm allowed to think you're a dick for saying it. <laughs> there's, right. there's, there's no hypocrisy there for me. There's, there's, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's fine. That's the truth. But yeah, I, I, it, is, it is a strange myth that people think you have to respect opinions. You don't have to respect opinions. You have to respect people's right to hold opinions. And that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do is respect their right to hold that opinion. You do not have to respect an opinion. Uh, it, it, it needs to earn respect. And I can't respect an opinion that the earth is 6,000 years old because I know it isn't any more than I can respect the opinion that two and two is five. You're allowed to think that. You are allowed to think two and two is five. Good luck to you. But it isn't. <laughs> well, I remember seeing your um, Shorty Awards video when you was like uh, talking about the age of the Earth being 6,000 years old and you went, who knows? Well, scientists know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 4.6. 4.6 billion. <laughs> yeah. Give or take. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I love I love the power of comedy as in, in sort of deconstructing the bad ideas. Well, that's what I, I think comedy. There's many facets and and many essential ingredients to comedy, um, but one of the big ones is that it should really undermine societal norms. That's what we're often laughing at. We um, you know, and that's particularly British. That's particularly British, and you know, uh, obviously made most popular with with um the the advent of like modern british comedy like monty python team you know yeah. um they directly went for judges and policemen and authority right. figures uh because that that's what we always wanted to laugh at that's what you laugh at growing up that's what workers laugh at they laugh at their bosses we laugh at kings and queens we laugh at um uh, politicians and uh, uh, you know absurdist humor surrealist humor is 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 flipping flipping reality a joke is 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 sort of um, flipping reality to a certain extent. There, there there has to be something in there that that surprised you that isn't normal, if you know what I mean. Uh, my worry about taking the Mickey out of the Bible is it's too easy. Yeah. That's my only. That's it's like a guilty pleasure for mine. But then, you know, I think it's justified because it's still so revered and respected and imposed. People still say that you know we're a we're a Christian country, whatever that means. I don't, I, I don't know what it means. I, I don't. A country can't be Christian. I, I love this. This. this oh, it's too easy to mock us. The fact that the word of God is such low hanging fruit should should tell you a lot. Well, exactly. I I, I say that. Um, I think it was Ian Hislop that criticised um, the, the routine you're talking about in animals, saying that at deconstructing the Bible. Oh, come on, that's too easy. And I, I think it was politics. That I addressed that, saying, well, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. If, no. if this is the gospel, you, you can't you can't deconstruct a math book. You can't go, <laughs> two and two equals four. What wank is that? <laughs> you can't. You can't make jokes. You can't, <laughs> you can't make fun of math. <laughs> it doesn't work. So that should be a clue. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, every, um, everything's valid. Everything's a, a, a justified target. It's what you do with it. Uh, I get that a lot as well, you know. Is there anything you shouldn't joke about? Um, no, there's nothing you shouldn't joke about, but it, it depends what the joke is, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, and I think that some people are very often offended, not just with religion, but anything. And everyone's got their own little ism. Everyone's got their own little sacred cow. But they often mistake the target of a joke with the subject of a joke. And that, that's where a lot of offence comes from. But, and again, uh, you know, just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. Exactly. And I think people have to, uh, have to hold that as dearly as freedom of speech. I'll ask you the, my, my final and most divisive question uh, that I've got so far. Sprouts, do we need them? No. no. Do you know what? I, 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 oh, I'll have a sprout Christmas Day. That is my concession. I will, <laughs> a, a, along with everything else, I, I will have a, a nicely cooked, glazed sprout. I'll eat one. I'll have a sprout <laughs> Christmas Day and that's it. And, and, I, and I eat that sprout um, for baby Jesus. <laughs> It's and that's, that's the only thing I do Christmas. That little sprout is baby Jesus. And um, it, it's the bogey of Christ. It is the bogey of Christ. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have the red, I have his blood, I have his body with a bit of bread, and I have the bogey of Christ. And, uh, and, and it, 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 it's not a bogey until I actually eat it. It's a sprout 
and then due to uh, transubstantiation, it, it turns into a, a bogey um, in my body. It's like some weird Bush Tucker trial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Think of that. Think of believing that, that wine turns into the blood. Literally. <laughs> Literally, they, they believe. Literally. Everyone's entitled to their beliefs. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But, okay, just because the whole of the Catholic Church believe that, people don't sound mad. But as Sam Harris said, now imagine someone saying uh, pancakes are the body of Elvis. Yeah. It sounds mad, doesn't it? I love, I, 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 I love Sam Harris. He, he almost delivers like a comedian at times. He though. does. No, he does. He knows it as well. He knows. He, 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 he knows it. Uh, it's obviously Richard Dawkins gets a lot of stick for being sort of like quite dry and professorial, um, which uh, which I think is a, is a strange accusation. Even quite clever, smart people I know go, oh, but he's not a very good, uh, not a good face of atheism because he comes to us a bit smug. Smug? He's, he's telling the truth. He's, he's, he's defending he's, a scientific I know, I know. It's a, I, 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 um, I did a tweet once about um, people say it's, uh, atheists are arrogant. So what's more arrogant? Not believing in something or believing that the same God that didn't stop the Holocaust helped you win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it like that. Yeah, I do. I fucking do. <laughs> I uh, I met Dawkins once at um, it's the National uh, Secular Society meeting, and uh, he was just sat down at the front, and I, I thought I'd go and say hello. And when when you meet somebody you you look up to, you get a little bit nervous sometimes and I thought I was thinking to myself you know say something intelligent ask ask him about natural selection or you know the proliferation of faith schools and I, I, I just blurted out like um, um, not wearing your crocoduck tie today professor brilliant and yep yeah, uh, and he just gave me a really sympathetic smile <laughs> no. yeah I love that I love that moment you go what can I say what can I say and all the things straight to your head and you go out and you go uh, professor Dawkins yeah, you're not a smug cunt <laughs> thank you very much Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Nor are you. Um, good, good, God bless. That is a brilliant Dawkins impression. <laughs> <laughs> now it is, then. <laughs> I'm, just doing a, I'm just doing a posh, a smart bloke from the home counties. Thank you, though. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's pretty much everything I, I was going to ask. Oh, well, um, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. I, mean, I wanted to say thanks as well, because uh, I'm not really sure how much life a, a spelling-related Twitter piss take accounts got in it but it's been it's been really fun it's it's, it's, it's it's great uh, the, um i love your account um mr oz atheist uh my 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 new favorite uh, to add to the list is some um, boring tweeter yeah i look forward to um, some changes and the tweet of god is pretty amazing isn't he <laughs> yes he's on a different I, he might actually be god yeah it's, it's, a, it's, a problem. it's funny because when he tweets me i, I do do feel a little bit special you think oh I've just got Got a tweet from God. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> well. Before I forget, what, what are you getting Ollie for Christmas? Oh, she'd, she'd get some catnip and some things on a spring. All the family get Ollie stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's a 50% hit rate. Some things she loves, some things she doesn't. She looks at you like going, why why, why would I go for a pink fluffy thing on a, on a bit of elastic? That's mental. <laughs> I'm a cat. I'm a cat. I'm not an idiot. Get me something cool. Catnip, yeah, I can get off my tits. But the pink fluffy thing that's, no, I'm, no, I'll, I'll do it my way. Someone asked me to describe Ollie in one word for this magazine article. And surly, it's surly. I well, There's a lovely quote, dogs have owners, cats have staff. <laughs> yeah. That's great, isn't it? Cats are gods, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, that's um, oh, what's his name? Who did Hitchhiker's Guide? Um... Douglas Adams. Is it Douglas Adams? Or was it um, Terry Pratchett? Well, I can't remember. Uh, this is a terrible, a terrible, terrible anecdote and quote because I can't remember exactly who said it. But I, one of them said, cats used to be um, revered as gods and they've never forgotten it. Perfect. Mm. Pun intended. It would be perfect if I knew who fucking said it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I invented comedy. <laughs> I said that. I put Manchester, Manchester on the map and I ruined the Muppets. Amazing. That is Thank you. That is uh, that is a career. Yes, <laughs> it is indeed. That was the career that was. All right. Thanks very much anyway. Oh, right, brilliant. Have a good Christmas. You have a great Christmas and a good New Year as well. See you later, man. 
What an incredibly funny and nice guy. Uh, make sure you look out for Derek Season 2 next year, and of course, Muppets Most Wanted. I think it'd be a little bit of a cop-out to leave the uh, Sprouts debate unanswered, so I'm going to call in an expert to have a final say. Hello? Hi, Mum. Hi, Sunshine. You alright? Mm. Been been asking everybody I've spoke to about Sprouts, and it's got a bit divisive. Oh, you're asking me about Sprouts? Yeah, so I, I want mm, your... Okay. You, get the, <laughs> you get the final say. Sprouts, yes or no? Yes. Oh, I might have to get a second opinion. Is that it? That's it. That's all I wanted. All right. All right. Speak to you soon, son. Love you. Love you too, darling. Take care. Bye. I think I may be adopted. Thanks for listening, and a huge thanks to all my guests. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Have a good one. Merry Christmas, everybody. Be pagan. Merry Christmas. Free happy Yuletide to everybody. Glory Yule. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Y feliz año nuevo. Hola, Weihnachten. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, everyone. Cheers. I I don't know why I'm telling you this, but um, I I came to see I came to see science uh, when you were doing your science tour. Uh, there was, it was a group of us, and uh, I, actually I don't feel bad because I bought I bought the DVD, so we're okay. Um, but I've got I had a record function on my um, MP3 player, so before the the gig I, I put it in my pocket and everything was going fine we all had a great time and <laughs> afterwards we came to my house for drinks and we were just talking about the show and, and somebody said we should we should listen to it so I, I jacked it into my um, surround sound uh, unit in the in the front room and we were listening and we were laughing along and then three quarters of the way in you, you just start getting a little quieter and you can hear footsteps and a door and, and it's when I remembered I'd gone to the loo about three quarters of the way in. Brilliant. So, yeah, we've got a, a crowded room full of people listening to me urinate, so... That's fantastic. That's my punishment for piracy. But, well, no, later the, the, they, they heard you um, taken out by the FBI because <laughs> I can pick up anyone um, illegally recording my gigs. It doesn't, it doesn't take long. Um, so uh, yeah, they must they must have they must have missed out on you. I'll um, I'll I'll have a word. I've been on the run ever since. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>